that no one had heard of Crossfire. Fun, just little old man golden boy story. Casted a Crossfire tournament with my boy Gex way back when in WCG. Uh, and I was really interested by the game because you're seeing a lot of players that were kind of like transplants from other games coming in and looking for that opportunity, right? In a game with maybe a decent amount of price pool. It's kind of the same thing here in Valorant where a lot of players are coming in from different games just looking for the opportunity because you never know what you're going to be able to get out of it. Players like Sinatra from the Overwatch League or the recently announced uh, Zachary going to the FaZe Clan. And now Superman here for uh, coming from Crossfire. It's insane to see the talent that's out there and what's still uh, not all that known to us right now. But in any case, though, the action unfolds and the B site taken over completely here by Homeless. Be able to place that spike down. No one has fallen just yet. As Cloud9 are going to work the backside here in the B Hall. And we're going to burst out of this door, checking corners with Blast Pack. Shinobi and Vice, though, are able to make quick work of Superman and Death. And the wall's out. That wall's going to be pretty big. It's going to take a, a sizable effort to be able to break through that. And they are not going to be able to do so, given that there's just all these guns pointed at the doorway. Smart play there to give up the site, come back in, take it with authority, and they will be able to get that first round win. I love the purchase of the wall as well. You don't always see Sages purchase walls, but I think it is right. Like you can do so much with it and it can win you round pretty much like we just saw there. Being able to just pop that wall down, go straight onto the diffuse and then just trust your teammates to protect you. And basically just have free fire on everyone who's going to be like, ah, we need to shoot down the wall. We need to take down the wall immediately. And it, it was easy pickings once they got to that point. So a good start for Cloud9 here. And on the side for, of Homeless, well, they'll just have to revisit maybe that starting strategy and maybe a couple of post plant positions could be a little bit different so that it's not that easy to wall them off. An aggressive angle being held on B and it's actually going to be punished. Poise gets the better of Relic there, prompting Mitch to back away as Shinobi gets the kill on depth. You got four players stacked here. Mitch is going to be met with a flurry of bullets who actually have to back away from this one. Luckily has some teammates there to back him up difference now they're all going to be fighting out of puka rather than before where they were coming out of that defender side and then tens wraps around the corner poised with three by the way he's been fragging out this round looking for another but he doesn't get it psalm's there to back his teammate up but it's mitch ever the reliable one helps his team to get their second round win mitch is one of those players who plays sage in the way that i think people should be playing sage he, he doesn't have that fear he doesn't have that mindset of I'm a support character and I need to make sure I survive until the end of the round so that I can yeah, heal every yeah. one of you. Uh, it, it's not that case for him. He says, actually, I'm going to use Sage for her strengths. I'm going to utilize these slow orbs. I'm going to use my walls and my best ability to help not just myself, but my team at the same time. And I think the fact he knows when to transition from kind of focusing on his own gameplay and then when to be that support character is what makes him so good on Sage. It's like a transitioning role almost and some... A rough start for him will fall to Vice's Bulldog. They do have a res though, which they can opt to use. That's going to be because Poise just dominated early in this game. Those two pistol rounds have really fared favorably for the Sage. And there's the res. Smart to just get in there with the nade. They will get out of that though. So some will fight again. I mean, he was banged up, though. They get that res. I don't think the Homeless will mind too much. They lost the opening pistol. They, they did the same against T1. They actually lost both pistol rounds against T1 on bind and still went on to win that game 13-10. So I'm sure they'd like to do something similar here. You can see they're stacking Ooh. towards the A site right now. And they are just getting all of the utility out of the opposition team. Mitch does get the opener onto Death, though. Death often flanking on that one side, and now the rest of the team, they try and push onto a site. It's not going to work out. It's just too strong hold from C9. That was clean, and the Guardian from Heaven. That gun is great. It's not something we get to see all the time. But oh, okay, Lasky, calm down for a moment there. 1v3. He's making some noise, and the Brim will hear him. Won't be shocked if he does this relics actually pokes out, but he does not. So Lasky just goes back. No time for him to work with. And that'll be three in a row for Cloud9. Lasky, though, able to take some guns away from people and make them pay for the next round. Not Nothing all that crazy, though. C9 continue their winning ways. And that Guardian from Heaven, that was nasty. 
you can put the right player in heaven, whether it's Guardian or a Vandal, just anything that can one-tap, it is so difficult to push up short on A. Like, you won't be able to get to lamps. You can't cross unless you smoke off heaven because mm -hmm. people could just one-tap you for fun. As long as they're good at it, and, you know, at this level, at this stage of a tournament, pretty much everyone knows how to hit those headshots. They know those angles they need to be watching, where to be pre-aiming at this point. It's a 3-0 lead for Cloud9. Yes, okay, Homeless are able to save one Phantom, so it's just going to be Lasky trying to do a little bit of damage here in Showers. He's just going to opt to get the ultimate orb as Death pushes through. Poised is there to take down Relic, so they've got the opening frag at least. With the Sheriffs and only Lasky rocking that Phantom, that's going to be the kit that they're starting things off with. And Lasky's going to be on the opposite side here of 10s, but we jump over to Shinobi's perspective now. They get the dedicated Sova for this team. A spot two is going to be lingering about by B Long. They have that potential option to just oh. port over, but it's Som, and it's, what a shot from him. Shinobi's there for the pickup, though. Here comes Huntress Fury right onto the garden, just trying to stop it. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, Def, he caught him! Shinobi, he was looking to just see if he could rain down as many shots with the Huntress Fury and garden, but did not expect a player swinging on elbow, and now they're able to get that spike down. Homeless, what a play from them. Yeah, this is a round that C9 shouldn't really be losing. But it's just these opening frags that were found with sheriffs as Tens now is going to come from behind in hookah and see what he can do but he needs to be careful as there is another raise right on behind him i don't think he spotted it just yet and there's gonna be lasky and boys will clean up the final one onto vice and there's the first round for homeless in quite an incredible eco round i know they do like to favor that b site when they have an eco of course they had the one gun on the side of Lasky. There was these opening picks with the sheriffs and how deadly that kind of single fire at range weapon can be if it's in the right hands. And well, there's some incredible shots that have been able to open up things here for Homeless. Who'd have thunk it there on the sheriff round? Getting a little uh, a little thrifty with it. Poise has been having one heck of a game. Shockingly enough though, in four rounds of play, Superman has been a non-factor. My eyes are better than yours. And that's gonna hurt them. As I just mentioned, Poise has been on fire at the beginning of this game. It does mean they're gonna be a couple of men behind and Tens gets one on Zalaski as well. Some will reply, but these opening frags from Sheriffs have just been so strong and they can make the difference. They can win you rounds. Showstopper available for 10s as well if he wants to use it. Superman is going to be creeping his way onto the site. Superman will take down 10s, but Vice is there to respond, GB. And these Sheriff rounds, they've been so strong from both sides. Yeah, yeah. and very impressive across the board. I have retrieved this. Though has to just go for this one. Maybe a little bait out there, cheeky bait with it. Oh man, could have actually gotten that kill on Heaven instead. Relics, a good movement, backs him away there, good right shot. at the nick of time. Mitcho is not going to be all that much fortunate. No more charges left. I'm continuing to bait with this. They have a lot of time, and that is just so good. The way that they're playing this. Now watch out for that Molly, though. It could actually burn Def. Def does move away, and he is going to get roasted a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Def is there to meet Relics at the end. That's going to bring things up just by one here for cloud nine but a start that was actually really strong gaskin and and you had noted it before the way that they've been playing the sheriff rounds both teams i don't know what it is they just have so much confidence with that weapon just so much one tap ability i mean at least cloud nine were able to do some damage there to homeless economy and mitch buy up here he might be on a, a weak buy yet he's just going to opt to go for the sheriff and a half armor whereas tens is going to be on the op now and we'll see whether Cloud9 can pick up a fourth round or whether Homeless can continue to fight back and slowly but surely reset the economy of Cloud9 and start to put some more rounds on the board. Only six rounds is what they got on the on their side attacking Whoa. against T1. <laughs> that was actually, that was filthy. I don't know if you saw that, but the uh, the shock bolt all the way from downtown actually ended up doing damage to Tens, who was waiting with an op looking at the showers. Just a, just a rat play. You love to see it.
I mean, we saw yesterday just how important some of the like strategic ability that Sam offers and like the, the time he's put into a lot of these angles for arrows and whatnot. As Shinobi will get the first frag on to death, and now the rest of the team will probably push on because Orbital will strike. They do manage to get on, and a few more kills are going to start to go on for the favor here of Cloud9. Relics does manage to get that critical kill there, and Superman maybe can start coming alive here. But it's tens. Ten stuffs him and ends him, giving him their fourth round win. Yeah, they tried to use the orbital strike just to force people out of that B site and away from it, but unfortunately it just forced them right into their sight lines. And it's a decent hold from Cloud9, and they're looking pretty strong on both sides. And that's the scary thing is when you are attacking on bind and you've gone A, you've gone B, and mm -hmm. you've struggled in both sites, you say, well, we don't, we don't have a C like we would in Haven, so we need to try and go for something a little bit different. I'd like to see Homeless go to their kind of split A strategy, which we saw a lot of them do in the group stage. They sent like two people into showers and three people down to short, and they would wait, I don't know, about 45 seconds, and then they would push in. they just try and bait out a little bit of utility before they started getting aggressive and pushing onto the site. They'd smoke the site very deep, they'd smoke off heaven, and then they'd smoke off the back site, which is exactly what they're doing here now. And they've got the showstopper to work with. Oh no, a lot of ults starting to come online and look at this, Lasky all the way on the other side actually sends a rocket out but doesn't get any kind of value out of it whatsoever. Relics gets him instead. Pens inside of heaven, what a nade there, connects to poise. It was really no option for him in that instance. Last player, Def, he was just hanging out by the bench. There wasn't really much he could do there, unfortunately for him. And that was a, a lot of investment was a lot of investment i mean they probably thought they were going to be able to comfortably get on that site but then it was the showstopper coming out from the other side and really tens showing us what he can offer on this raise the grenade was on point he knew exactly where homeless were going to be pushing yeah and they lost a couple just because of that sheer fragging power that raise has to offer and tens on this raise like it's so scary with the op as well just being able to like blast pack his way out of windows and then suddenly get a quick scope and then you can blast pack back out of dodge just like you would do with a with a jet to be honest but it just means you have a little bit more fragging power with the grenade and of course with the showstopper as well one of the reasons why you'll continue to see tens playing the roles that he's been known for that high intensity gameplay he was before playing the sage for his team and that changed tens does have a read though as to what's going to be going on here by shower and lasky he went for the poke he thought maybe he could actually uh take him out there tens was just a little bit to the side not enough to get the connection though smart play just dropping back to site waiting to see if anyone else is going to be pushing in but on the other side a, a rotation now starting to happen. Lasky's going to continue to work this here. Trying his best as Mitch, though, will catch out Def, and that's happened time and time again now already in this first map where Def has been lurking, as he always does as the Cypher, but has been picked off early. But you there's the res from Poise, so it's not too detrimental in this round. But now it does mean with 25 seconds left, they need to start heading towards the site. Oh, no. Fury will be popped by Sam. does catch his teammate, but at least he manages to get frag onto relics I have now here comes spike. death pushing onto site neural death will allow to find one and they will or should get this plan down as the other two members are going to be rotating from spawn it's just going to be the lone player of tens now on this op here gb doing his due diligence checking the corners does have an op it'll be that much more challenging though 1v2 not impossible but with the way here that death is just playing this and they're also going to have that body in hookah He's doing the pokes around the corner where you would typically expect him to go to, but Lasky from Hookah ends him, and they'll benefit from taking that op away from Tens. That was a lot better of a push. We've not seen that much success on a B site push for Homeless across this tournament. They've certainly found more success on A site. They've usually tended to go towards B when they're on an eco round or whether the other team's on low money. But maybe they've noticed a little bit of a weakness or they've, they've realized that Tens wasn't playing b site with that op. The op's now going to be shifted over to Mitch for C9 here. So maybe that is them trying to counteract 
Tens being avoided here on this map. They say, okay, well, if we give it to someone else, then maybe he can get the opening frag, which he does. Def again caught out on B long with his pants down, just trying to put a camera up. Always with the pants down. Always. You know, and that's rough because you want to have a belt normally. I think going to happen this time around. You have to maybe buy that in your next round. And it's just a shame for Homeless because... They find themselves four versus five again. This time they don't have the resurrect. They can't pick up death. Lasky does have the op and is in showers. He's been able to get this orb quite comfortably round after round, which is always going to be a scary factor because Showstopper is such a powerful ultimate. Ten's just having a little jump peek here to see if anyone is popping out of showers and he does still have the nade available. Those paint shells can do some real damage here to this potential A push and it is going to be an A push realistically looking at where they're all heading with only 38 seconds left now. No All right, well, here we go. Now it's going to be the push. They start to make their way in. Shinobi is going to be in the backfield. Well, Hunter's Fury does manage to connect with one tens. What a shot, but Som is there for clean of duty. Unfortunately for him, it was not going to be a multi-kill. Vice ends that one, and Lasky, only player left alive, just has to get out of there. No time remaining. That's going to be the round. They'll still have the op, but the round will go to C9. 6-3. And four homeless. But still, still manageable. They've still got the op. They've been able to have that this round, so they'll probably buy up a couple of weapons around it. No, they're just going to go for the sheriffs, and we've already seen what damage they can do with the sheriffs. There. I think Cloud9 has done very well at transitioning this op from site to site, just to try and catch Homeless off guard. I mean, we, we actually heard from the interview when we saw Sentinels and how Shazam was saying he thinks that they found a way to kind of topple this op meta by getting aggressive and pushing onto the sites and not peeking alone, instead always double peeking, always facing together. Ooh, no one facing with death. Again, Mitch gets the opener. Yeah, Mitch has just been amazing. Every game that we see Mitch play, he is the sage that everyone should be. Rocking this angle here is Lasky now. Plenty of time remaining, obviously. 105. A few more shots are starting to go out. That shock dart could actually be a little bit of a problem there. The shock bolt, excuse me. With only the sheriffs, they have found success with these weapons in the past. And if Lasky can continue to hold on to this op, that would... Yeah, the very least good news for them, but I'm sure that they would want to try and convert these into some round wins. With two players down, that will be very challenging. I'm 33 seconds remaining. Waiting for this poke around Gaskin, and I... I don't think they're going to give them what they're looking for. No, they don't need to face at this point. They don't want to give any sort of... entrance onto either site. They don't want to give away any weapons either at this point, because then it would allow a save to happen from Homeless as well as this op. Maybe now they'll go for a little bit hunt. Now they know it's just Lasky, and now they know he, ha he has that op, and here comes the teleport. Everyone is going to be having a little hunt. It's like an Easter egg hunt at this point, but where is it going to be? Is it in a bush? Is it around the corner? It is going to be around the corner. Oh, he misses no! the shot, and Relics gets the 3k. Lasky loses the op, and that is a massive kill for Cloud9. Because it means now, going into this round, Homeless won't have the money to buy up an op. Rough goings for Homeless so far. Cloud9, though, picking up the momentum from where they left off against their game, or in their game with the Immortals yesterday. Okay. Superman's opted, opted to go for just half armor to ensure that Lasky can have the op. Superman not having the rounds that we saw from him yesterday. Two and nine. And I think that this game really just opens up if Superman can start to frag out the way that we would see him do. But when you're pushing like that, there's not a lot of options. And Mitch just ends Superman there. So his uh, unfortunate run continues on bind. 
All stacked up on the garden, Gaskin. Relics has an orbital strike. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, I think he's just gonna wait this one out. And more stall. If they do commit, though, he still has that orbital strike to just delay them a little bit more and give Tens and Mitch time to get around. But they have pulled away some utility. Perhaps they're going to debate whether or not they... And this is the conversation they're having here. All right, let's see if we can get a look around. We have 40 seconds. We got to start acting fast. If Def gets a kill, maybe they start moving quickly by A. This is just mostly get some indication as to what's going on here. Mitch now going to have to deal with this, and he does so swimmingly. So the call has been made. Unfortunately, though, Mitch is waiting for them right at short. They had this the debate. And they went for the debate, GB. They've gone for the TP, but with only oh, 20 no. seconds left, Orbital oh, Strike is going to slow them right down. And now they have to absolutely peg it to B-side if they're going to get this one down. It's going to be so difficult to get through Hookah. Only five seconds to actually get there. I don't think that's going to get the plan. This is going to be so close. Fraction's yeah, he okay. Got He's he got just it. got it. He just. got it. Oh. <laughs> That was a little squeaky bum time there, Gaskin, but it works out, albeit in a not the best way possible. Both players are going to be coming from the defender side, so Lasky will be okay in the angle that he's watching. Look out for Poison, and I think Lasky's going to be the one that should make first contact before he swings, and there you go. Nicely done there for Homeless. They get themselves a win, and that was a little bit all over the place, if I'm being honest with you. Just... From the start, Superman getting picked off. I mean, shout out to Def for getting that frag in the market and, and giving them the indication to start the push, but there was still one more player there waiting. It was everything just went wrong there, and it still managed to come out on top. But I like the quick decision making, the quick thinking to just retreat to either site, go for the teleport, and then straight back to the B site. Would they have gone for that if there wasn't the orbital strike that was blocking them going onto the site? Maybe not but very good and quick decision-making there out of Homeless, and they needed that round. Now it gives them the chance for potentially a 7-5, which is definitely still manageable going into their defensive half. And they had a very strong defensive half when we saw them against T1. That's where they really won their game. It's a very even attacking half for them when they only found the six rounds against T1, so five rounds here wouldn't be the end of the world. And they have a whole mess of ults available, Gaskin. Use them all. Use everything. Crush through that hookah wall and start to just rain death and destruction down on your opponents. But unfortunately, though, Shinobi gets a kill on Lasky while he was trying to fire in the hole. Doesn't end up happening. Tense is going to be picked up on the defensive side. And this 7-4, 7-5 is looking a little bit more likely here, given that they're going to be playing in a 4v2. Relic so on the flank. Look out for him. He has been known to clutch out a few in the past. Now it's just going to be all up to him in a 1v3. Back here by elbow, smoked out. No real options, needs to wait for this smoke to dissipate, which it will in a few moments. And then once that does, the fireworks will begin. Doesn't expose himself to Hookah, has to check so many corners and Poise will get that. Three kills for Poise and what a half it was for him as well. To start getting that res early on, just giving his teammates uh, some upper hands from time to time. But now we're gonna swap sides here and let's see what Homeless can do on this defense, which they have put together some amazing defenses on this map in the past from what we we've have. seen throughout this tournament. Yeah, and Superman might not be shining right now. Three and 10, attacking is a brimstone, but it was really his defensive half when he showed that, up yeah. against T1 on bind. Like when he was on B site and he was being able to hold it against three, hold it against four, it didn't matter how many were pushing him. He was smoking the right places. His pre-fire was excellent. If he can carry on doing the same, he can lock down that B site. And it means that Cloud9 will be forced to try and hit A site over and over again, which then means you could see the stack. We are going to see a little bit of a change, though. Superman is going to be on the A site, certainly for this pistol round. Maybe that will change a little bit later. Having the Molotov and the grenades available makes it very difficult for a team to push up short. And uh, an interesting position, too, uh, for, for the Sage to be all the way back in the cubby. Uh, on a sages would normally play closer up to that choke or play the shower but this time around and, and i i would assume that that means that probably just running slows which would be safer from distance yep you're probably right is the rest of the team now 
of Cloud9 have started to move towards B. They are going to be gathering up in Hookah, though, which is always a very scary place to go because it means you have to jump out of that window and it leaves yourself quite vulnerable. But here we go. This is going to be unfolding right here on B side. Oh, this is bad news. That's bad news. Gary blows up right in front of Death, though. Kills are starting to come in. Som will get two kills out of that one. Right between the now Superman gets on through. Only one player remaining. And it was Vice. It was a valiant effort without a doubt. But now they're going to be within one. And that looked like it could have gone real poorly. But Som was the hero in the wings waiting to be unleashed. Fortnite players, lol. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look, Som is <laughs> unreal, by the way. The amount of grief he got for being a Fortnite player. I mean, mechanically, the things that people have to do in Fortnite for him to now come into this game and be this dominant just shows, like, skills can transition in different ways. And honestly, I love what he has to offer for this team. Like, it's not just your standard mechanical aim that he has to offer, but it's the, mm -hmm. the time and the research he's clearly put in. You, you can tell that he knows what he wants to do on a map, and I think you said it best. Like, it's almost like the team shapes themselves around what he has to offer and what he can do with a Sova or a Viper or whatever it is he's playing. It was one of his strongest traits when he was competing in that game for millions of dollars. He was always just bending the meta to whatever it is that he wanted. But we'll reflect on him in a little bit here. I'm sure that there will be plenty of opportunities to do so. Now, this play that happens with these sheriffs and and overall with these pistols was mostly just to get that orb. And what worked out was they ended up getting a kill. Poise goes down. It is something we see a lot more in kind of like high level Valorant play than you would see in your normal matchmaking games is people mm -hmm. prioritizing getting those orbs, like having a little bit of a a force towards one side of the map to ensure they get the orb and then transitioning to the other side of the map or, or continuing the flow if they're able to pick up a significant amount of kills. And it's very important because the ultimates can make or break rounds as there's going to be a heavy push now oh. through short, but here comes Lasky, Satchel right to the face of Relics. Yeah, he planted that one exactly where he needed to. Spike's going to go down, but now the fire starts to come through here. Shinobi executes on getting that spike down with the coverage of the smoke and doesn't take all that much damage, but now it's going to start getting banged up. You can't shoot that shoot through that box with the Spectre. It doesn't work out, unfortunately. He isn't able to do the damage, but when he comes around the corner, though, that actually pays off now. Last player left alive is going to be tense. 22 HP in a dream. The nade goes down, doesn't quite pick up a kill yet though, but players are gonna be very weak and tens, tens. Oh boy, and Psalm clutches out right through the structure, does manage to get the kill, the headshot. Tens was looking mighty scary there, but now we're gonna be all tied up here, Gaskin. We got ourselves a game. I mean, thank goodness Psalm actually had the Phantom there because if that was just a Spectre, he might have died. Because as you say, wall banging with a Spectre, not so great. Wall banging with uh, Phantom, you're gonna have a good time. And he was able to spray him down through the box. And uh, yeah, now we're at 7 7, and Homeless have done something they weren't able to go and do against T1. It was win a pistol round and the following round afterwards in bind. So now, if you imagine the fact that they were able to beat T1 after losing both pistols here at 7 7, and they had a strong defensive half against T1, there's no reason why they couldn't do the same here and just kind of close out Cloud9 slowly but surely just with their superior defensive possibilities watch out for tens though showstopper is out he knows players are in hookah there goes the wall he gets through right in the nick of time he gets through but he can't get out so he'll just have to wait but now this play is going to pivot just a little bit superman goes back and places tight angle here on the garden on the other side you have Vice, a few cyber cages down. I don't know if he anticipated him to push out. Well, certainly worked out. Vice had a great read on that one in the garden. B site wide open for them, and that is why everyone's starting to make their moves here. Yeah, three members of Homeless is just firmly stuck to the ground on A site. Even with the two picks on B, they're just holding their ground and hoping that maybe they can bluff their way into this, but it's probably going to be a case that they save their weapons at this point. I can't see them trying to take this three versus five. Can we just talk about Tenza's aggression into Hookah? Oh, it was great. I mean, you know when you play the Sage and you watch a Sage, you want to wait for that last second to put the wall up. 
But when there was already a little bit of fire and that first satchel had already come out, you would have thought the wall would have gone up slightly earlier. But Ten's just, with a lack of respect, pushing in with the wide peak into Hooker. And really, probably won them the round. Yeah, and I'm also a little surprised, too, that it didn't come out sooner. But I think the reason why was because Tens had Showstopper. And if he was to, like, potentially get through there, he was just going to fly through it, right? Like, he was going to fly through. On the money. Relics roaming, getting kills. So he, he would have flown in and then, uh, you know, blast packed up, boom, exploded. And then at that point, right, like, I, I think that there was just a hesitation because he was anticipating him to get aggressive inside and it just didn't end up paying out uh, because he did. And he just wasn't prepared for the way he approached it. He didn't use Showstopper. He just went in there with his weapon with all the confidence in the world that Tens has. So much confidence. I mean, he breathes it at the moment. And he really is the kind of central point of this Cloud9 squad. But the Cloud9 squad has been improving around him drastically, tournament after tournament. And now they've been able to reset this economy ever so slightly on the side of Homeless. Last to get aggressive with the op here. But it's oh. not going to work out. Relics catches him out. That is unfortunate, Gaskin. Lasky, had he been just a touch quicker, would have seen Relics on the transition and then might have been able to do the thing that Tens was doing so many times. Def might get a kill with this and does so. That shorty at close range will do a heap load of damage to you, but so will a blast pack. And Tens delivers that one right to the loving hands of Def. Blast packs are just so, so deadly. Tens now continuing to tear through lamps here. Has another set of paint shells to lob out. And that's going to be the 3k and going to be the round. So clean. Very clean round, as it should be, but I guess it's all down to Lasky really getting aggressive there with the up. You can understand why he wants to do so. If he gets a pick there and maybe mm -hmm. he catches one player off guard and maybe they're able to get a gun, then it could be a winnable round. But at least it was a somewhat weak buy and at least now they can full buy here on the side of Homeless. I am getting a little concerned for Homeless here. They're making some plays that I, I don't haven't seen them, or at least in their match against T1. I don't recall how many times Lasky decided to get aggressive uh, on uh, on on short A. Like I'm, it wasn't it wasn't all that much, honestly. So it seems like we are going to be on a pause right now, uh, and then once we get that sorted out, we'll jump back into the action. But yeah, man, it's it, it's. A little concerning, Dan. It is concerning, but you can understand why he got aggressive, right? Like, they yeah. had only saved the op and one rifle from the previous round. So if it had worked, we would have been singing his praises and been like, oh, all what hail Lasky, oh, oh God. But Mitch gets the opener onto Superman and Superman again, just not really stepping up like he did yesterday. And getting picked off early is not going to be the best way to start this. I'm surprised he faced that aggressively, considering they already lost that early pick in the previous round when they tried to get aggressive. Something they did very well against T1 is they kind of just sat back deep in sights and they allowed T1 to push. Maybe they need to start doing something similar here. And perhaps that could be the winning recipe. Tens is already going to be inside of Lamb, so they've won this one out. Mitch is going to get a little aggro pushing forward. That spike is down. Oh my goodness, Mitch is just, he has like one HP. We'll be able to uh, give himself some more health, Lasky. Waiting for anything that can maybe work out for them, but Tens Showstopper is gonna stuff poise. Very unfortunate there, but very fortunate for Cloud9. No way! Because the, uh, the the hunter's fury now, and Tens just smart, so smart, getting out of dodge with that blast pack. Only person left alive was Psalm, and that will be a wrap on that round with a bow on it. 10 7 now is there, the first to hit double digit territory, and getting oh so close to taking this first game win. And on, on a pick that Homeless has been extremely comfortable on uh, throughout the entirety of PAX Arena. Last time we saw Homeless play this against T1, Superman went 23 and 14. He's now 6 and 14. Like wow. That is a major difference. I don't know whether it's down to playstyle, whether it's down to Cloud9 just shutting him out and he's not being able to have the freedom that he was able to have against T1. 
but certainly is not on his A game right now. And, and I think that is a big loss because some of the rounds he was winning, some of the clutch moments he had yesterday were unreal. And now without that clutch factor, there are a couple of rounds where Homeless look a little bit flat here and there. Yeah, it's not that same energy that we had from them in their battle against T1, right? Tens marches onto the site though. Poise is gonna meet him with a Spectre and does manage to come out on top with that one. Som with 47 HP. Now this team has done well with the Sheriffs in the past and just I say 47 down, loses 20 of that. So down to 27. You basically breathe on him and he'll die at this point. At least they were able to guess right and stack this B site. There is gonna be one rotation. Death's gonna move his way all the way around to A side now. Which isn't really gonna work out. They had hedged their bets correctly. And fair play to Cloud9 for kind of holding their ground even after losing the first pick. And now Hunter's Fury will come out to try and clear the site. Sam will take down Relics, but Mitch is there to get the trade. And now they should have enough players to be able to waltz onto this site as Lasky and Superman fall. Now it's just gonna be the one remaining player of death who does go down 11-7. It was a scary start to the round with 10s falling to the SMG. As I said, I'm impressed that they didn't retreat after that. They didn't say, oh God, well, we've, we've lost a pick here. Maybe we should go round to A. They said, no, stick it to our guns. We're going to continue to push. Just wait a little bit. Maybe force the rotate out of the opposition. And they did so. Now four rounds in a row for Cloud9. And they're in touching distance of taking this first map, GB. Yeah, they have that confidence because they knew the weaponry for Homeless was going to be weaker. And it was for that reason that they knew that they could take that fight and succeed, which is exactly what ended up happening. A few ults are now going to be online. Most notably, the Brimstone Orbital Strike that Relics could potentially use here. We give them some space to get onto this site. Lasky, though, can actually be able to do some real damage with the Showstopper. Four players are going to be stacked short A. Lasky will get called out here. Does get called out. Got spotted by the Owl Drone, but didn't get tagged. That's at least the good situation. There's a lot of ultimates available. He's playing Both sides, edge. really. So this close. round could be bloody nuts. And I'm a little yeah. bit scared as to what is going to unfold. Oh, yeah. It's happening. It's happening. Lasky now. But Tens is playing this angle. He anticipated it. He knocked him down. He's, I think he saw the gun, and that is going to prompt Lasky to just bail out of that one. But with those smokes coming down, he thought that the aggro push was going to start to happen. Lasky will have to do something here. With that showstopper, kind of tip the odds in their favor. They have a whole bunch of ultimates available. Orbital Strike on the lamps. Might be able to get one, and it does. Relics is good for the kill against exactly Death. And here goes the Neural Theft now. Mitch is going to bring Relics right back into fighting position here, only leaving two players remaining. It's going to be Poise along with Superman. And Poise by short. Tens. Once this wall goes down, he'll get the better. It works out. I mean, it feels almost like it works out every time for them with the way that Tens plays. Superman is going to try and make this one into a possibility. He's going to force the situation. And if he's able to pull this one out, it will be huge but it, it it looks like it just is not very possible they're giving him nothing to work with here gaskin one player's tucked away in the cubby superman will encounter mitch in just a second and mitch will win that and just a, a courtesy crouch on his uh on his remains yeah and an impressive angle to be holding from mitch as well because i think they didn't realize he had managed to sneak through to lamps there yeah so they could have been all focused on kind of heaven and that defender's spawn entrance and instead mitch was wise to it and kind of thought well could he have got through lamps guys and that asked that question was probably asked to the team and they said well then you may maybe maybe it could have and just being yeah. able to hold that angle just ensure there wasn't going to be any sort of clutch happening and now 12 7 money not great on the side of homeless we see half armors being bought a bulldog there as well they need to play some flawless valorant they're going to take this to overtime, but the way it's going, Cloud9 have just been too aggressive and too successful with their executions onto site. And I feel like this isn't the same homeless that we saw against T1. It doesn't seem like they're quite as on fire, which is a shame because you don't want to see them burn out. Oh. They are going to get aggressive. Oh, they're actually going to push this one. I respect that play. They went right for it, but Vice was there on the cross to help his buddies out, and now A site's going to be available. Superman still with that orbital strike will get there in time. 
Oh, actually, he's going to double back, but the call's been made. They're putting Spike down. There goes Orbital. Is it enough to get the kill on Tens? No, Tens is still going to be... Oh, I was going to say, he's still going to have a little bit of HP remaining. But certainly not going to be enough there. And also, Mitch really just going to be all banged up here. Both players, as a matter of fact. Mitch is able to give himself some health again. There goes some. He knows exactly where these guys are going to be. But Mitch, instead, around the corner there was Superman. Gets the headshot. And that is a sigh of relief to keep Homeless going in this game. But Gaskin match point still belongs to Cloud9. Does still belong to Cloud9, but that is at least the start of a possible comeback from Homeless. Like, I want to see them relight that fire that we saw yesterday from them. Just kind of get that communication going, get the chemistry on point, making sure they're trading out kills, not pushing alone. Several rounds that they've lost here on this defensive half has just been someone peeking on their own just to try, I don't know whether it's something a little bit fancy, trying to get an early pick themselves. Maybe they're overconfident, I don't know. But now when you're down 12-8, if you're going to take a risk, you need someone to hold your hand there just to trade out in case it goes wrong. Because otherwise, mm. if you find yourself 5-4 down in terms of like player advantage, then you are really going to struggle. Look at this. Four players at B site. Two players inside of Hookah. Poise is going to be dropping back and playing patrol. Def watching the angle, and he's inside of that. Tense is going to go for this poke, potentially. He will have his teammates to support him there. But Psalm oh. gets two! Psalm gets two! Huge from Psalm there. And I love this setup as well. Stacking B site, but using Cypher, his camera and his traps on A site just to get any information. Neural Theft comes out as well. So now they'll know exactly where these remaining members of Cloud9 are. As they are actually all very separated on the map. Those look like they are going to think about heading towards A. With the player advantage, and now here in the TP, I imagine that rotation is going to come through here. Lasky's going to be the lone gunman here holding down this site. Does have Showstopper, might have to use this one, but instead it's going to send Gary out first to get some intelligence, and it is going to be job done, mission accomplished there for the Boombot. Lasky's holding this down for so long, and... Mitch, though, he's been so amazing with that. The, oh, my oh. goodness, Mitch. Oh, my goodness, Mitch. He got a triple there at the blink of an eye. And Shinobi around the corner on the box is going to end that game. Cloud9, just like that, pick up the win on Vine. Was that a three for one? Or is I, he five for two no, shots? It was, a, it, was a, oh, it was two shots. It was, he got the first kill, and then he got the two for one through the uh, structure. Jesus Christ. I mean... Lasky was holding on to his showstopper there as well, probably thinking that round was in control and they had the player advantage, but I feel like he should have just popped it. As soon as he saw those several members in showers there, pop that showstopper. You are having to play flawless Valorant at this point. You can't afford to lose another round, but Cloud9 showing up on Bind, arguably one of Homeless's better maps here. And 